Now, find the height of the point of collision above AB. Find the height of the point of collision above AB, above the horizontal. Okay, so this distance up here, wherever they hit. Where are you going to go? You're going to take your y equation, either of them, right, and just sub in t equals 4. Okay, I think you guys can handle that part of your answer. So I'm going to skip over to the last part of the question. Find, correct to the nearest degree, the obtuse angle between the directions of motion of the particles at the instant they collide. Okay, right. Now this is where the fun really settles in. What's the picture? These two particles are going to collide in some way. Say they might collide like that. Okay, there's my collision. So I'm looking for an angle. Now if they're going off like that, one of the ways that you can make your angles obvious is by drawing some tangents in. So if I draw a tangent in there, and a tangent in there, this angle here, that's the obtuse angle that I'm after. Okay, the angle between them. So how do I get that? How am I going to work that out? Yeah. Could you find the um, the derivatives of each? Okay. Yep. Yep. And then what do I do with that? Use the m equals ten. Yep. Good. One. No, what is it? Okay. Now let's pause for a minute. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. So your first option is. You can go angle between two lines. Okay, it's worth noting, by the way, that the angle between two lines it'll give you the acute angle. Okay, that's the way that tan defaults. Okay, so once you've got that, you take one eighty minus, and there's your obtuse angle. Okay, now there's option one. I'm not going to go toward that option here, even though it's perfectly valid. The reason why is because what you would need is the equation of the path. Okay, now sure enough, you can get the equation of the path. I've showed you how to do that before. Okay, but I don't have them yet, and I don't need them either. Okay, so just file that in the back of your mind that number one, okay, use the equation of path and then take the derivatives. And then use that to do angle between two lines. Let me show you the second solution, which is just using all of the equations that we've got here. Okay. So regular equations of motion. Okay, now, I'm going to have to do this twice, this whole process. I'm going to do it once for the first particle and once for the second particle, okay? So, <clears throat> what I want you to do is set up all of your equations, your x and your y, for each of the particles, okay? So, your first particle, right? Uh, particle 1, okay? Its horizontal um, position is given by... 30t cos, now hold on a second, our angle there was sine inverse of, four, was it 4 feet? Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. So I actually know what this is already, that's 3 feet. Okay. So this part is going to be, let's see here, um, 30 times 3 feet, that's going to be 18t. Is that right? 30 times 3 fifths. Yeah. Okay, good. So there's x1. Now, that, what that lets me really easily read off is my velocity for this first particle, right? Because velocity is just dv dt. Sorry, dx dt. Okay? So that's just 18. Is that okay? All right. Now, if I want to know a gradient, I'm going to need to know the other velocity as well, the vertical one. So y1 was, I think it was, let's see, minus half gt squared plus... Hmm. Let's see here. V2, which is 40. And then we had T again, cos of this business all over again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay, right. Now, let's just simplify this and then we'll differentiate, okay? This is minus half GT squared plus. Now, this is just 4 fifths. So that's going to be, divide by 5 gives you 8, multiply by 4 gives you 32. Yeah? 32t. Okay? So now when I differentiate that to get vertical velocity, right? This is going to become, what's this? That's going to be just gt, sorry, minus gt. And this will be 32. So far, so good. Okay, now what I'm actually interested in is the point of collision, right? When t equals 4. 
So this part here is actually going to be, I know what g is, that's 10, so this will be minus 40 plus 32, that's minus 8. Wait, is that what I got before? Hmm. Sorry, I'm just going to double check my numbers. 18. I think I've done something wrong. 30. Ah, sorry, I changed this. That's wrong. 30. This should be 24. Sorry. Minus 16. Okay, pause. Does that make sense? Is that consistent? It's heading upwards at 18. Sorry, horizontally at 18. So it's heading in that direction. But actually, it's been traveling so long that it's gone up and then it's come back down. Does that make sense? That's why this is minus 16. So this is the diagram that I'm going to draw for here. It's going down like so. Okay. Here's my x dot, which is 18. And here's my y dot, which is minus 16. OK? So far, so good. All right, now you're in to repeat this for particle two. Okay, now let me save you a bit of time because I've already worked this out and it's the process is exactly the same as what you go through here. The horizontal velocity for the second particle is minus 32 and the vertical one is minus 16. Now does that make sense? Minus 32, it's heading to the left, check. Minus 16, it's also dropping down, okay? So what I've got is this kind of scenario. Minus 32, that's x dot, and y dot, minus 64. Okay? All right, now, come back to this diagram here. What was the obtuse angle I was after? It was this one, right? So let me redraw this because this is not accurate. It's actually more like this. Um, one heads down like that, and the other heads down like that. That's how they collide. So I'm interested in this angle here, right? Now come over to your rectangles. Which is the angle that corresponds to that? which is the pair of angles. If I put a vertical line through it, right? You can see which angles, can't you? It's this angle, let's call it alpha, okay? Plus this angle, let's call it beta, okay? So, the actual angle I'm after, let's have a look. Um, for alpha, that's gonna be tan inverse of, which side's in what order? Opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. So that's 18 on 16, which is 9 over 8. Is that okay? There's alpha. Beta will be, come in. Did anyone else hear that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going crazy. Hold on. I was mid thought. Okay, beta here. Right? Opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 32 over 16. Yeah? That's 2. Right? So the actual angle I want is alpha plus beta, which is those two, which I think your calculator wants to tell you is 111.8014. And they just get it to the nearest degree. Okay? So, sort of leave it up to you whether you decide, do you want to go equation of path and then use the derivatives um, and then use the angle between two lines or do you want to just use these equations, use those derivatives and then just add them up with the rectangles. I think they're both kind of equivalent. Depends on how the question gets set up for you. Whether you already know the equation of the path, that would save you a lot of time. Okay? But that's the way I approach that question. 